hello guys welcome back to my channel so today's video is from farmers uh, today's video is from treasure christ plus saying farmers viral song which is number one then this happens this happens okay let's check it out guys i've been selling my soul working all day overtime hours for pay this song rich men north of richmond is currently the most viral song in the United States right now. Let's take a look at what some people are saying about it and then comment on the lyrics from a Christian perspective. Benny Johnson, a political commentator, tweeted, Rich Men North of Richmond is the most listened to track in the world in the past 24 hours. This American working man's protest song has millions and millions of plays sung by an off-the-grid farmer in the countryside with his dogs. Follow Oliver Anthony at ain't got a dollar. Matt Walsh from the Daily Wire tweeted, One interesting thing about rich men north of Richmond is that he rightly attacks the welfare state. Many conservatives think that it isn't populist to criticize entitlements, but in reality, blue-collar Americans are sick of having their money stolen to prop up a system that functions as nothing more than a vote-buying scheme for Democrats. Go up to any guy at any bar in any blue-collar part of the country, ask him what he thinks of entitlements, and he'll say exactly what Anthony says in the song. Oliver Anthony, the man who wrote and performed the song, tweeted, I'm still in a state of shock at the outpouring of love I've seen in the comments, messages, and emails. I'm working to respond to everyone as quickly as possible. Here are some of the notable comments in response to Oliver's Twitter post. Cat Turd, a very popular conservative Twitter account, said this, Because of this wonderful and powerful song, John Rich has agreed to produce you and your music. He's the most honest person in country music. This is the offer I'd jump on. Clearly, Oliver and his song are getting a lot of attention from a lot of people, and his life will be forever changed after all of this. Megan Burks with The Daily Wire responded with, Hi Oliver, sent you a DM on Insta. If you have any interest in Real Daily Wire interview, my DMs are open. Oliver's song is seen as an anthem for working class Americans who feel that they have been left behind by rich men north of Richmond, or rich politicians in Washington DC who not only do not care about them, but are also actively making policies that harm working class Americans. So I can sit out here and waste my life away, drag back home and drown my troubles away. Clearly, Oliver is feeling a sense of hopelessness and powerlessness as he feels that he is being controlled by rich men in powerful places. My prayer is that Oliver would find purpose through Jesus Christ, because when we recognize our sin, repent of it, and turn towards following Jesus, we find our true purpose in life and no longer quote-unquote waste our lives away. For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. There you have it. I was created to bring glory and honor to God, my creator. That's why I'm here. Who am I? The crowning glory of the creation of God. Why am I here? I'm here to bring God glory. That's the purpose of my existence, to bring God glory. No matter how rich or poor someone is, when we pursue God's glory and making known the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can have satisfaction and joy knowing that we are living our life the way God created us to live it. It's a what the world's gotten to for people like me, people like you, wish I could just wake up and it not be true. But it is. Oh, it is. Oliver is correct that the world has become a dark place for many regular working class people in this country who have been both forgotten and even victimized as the enemy. The cultural hegemony is patriarchal. The cultural hegemony, for example, in our society is white, male, heterosexual, cisgendered, able-bodied, native-born Americans. You know who you are. And everybody who's not that is a minority. And everybody who's not that is a victim of the cultural hegemony established by those individuals. Which means that everybody who's not that is at war with that. 
And everybody who is that is privileged. In Western cultures today, particular people have become the enemy simply because of the group they belong to, whether or not they are rich or poor, whether or not they have good or bad values. Living in the new world, with an whole soul, these rich men hold the rich men. There's a reason why working class Americans do not trust rich politicians in Washington, D.C. Just consider President Joe Biden's push for student loan forgiveness, which basically steals money from working class Americans who either never went to college or paid off all of their student loans already to subsidize the education of people who have not paid off their student loans. All new this midday, the Biden administration says more than 800,000 student loan borrowers will have their remaining federal student loans forgiven over the next several weeks. Today's announcement will impact $39 billion dollars in student debt, according to the Department of Education. This will be automatic forgiveness and borrowers will be notified. It kicks off the president's new student debt relief program called SAVE, which will lower monthly federal debt payments based on factors like income, family size, in some cases reducing monthly payments to zero. There is much in the system that is simply unfair towards particular people. And people like Oliver are rightfully upset about just how disconnected from everyday Americans politicians like President Joe Biden are. It should be obvious that our government does not manage money well. The debt of the United States of America is now over $32 trillion because of reckless spending. And the burden of this debt is falling on American taxpayers who are finding that their money is becoming less and less valuable because of taxation and inflation. I wish politicians would look out for miners and not just miners on an island somewhere. This is a reference to politicians who are more concerned about allowing minors to have life-changing, life-ruining surgeries in the name of affirming care, rather than seeking to protect minors who are being trafficked or harmed by the adults in their lives. This was made crystal clear by the mainstream media's response to the movie The Sound of Freedom. Instead of promoting the movie and the message of the movie against the evils of trafficking, the media sought to discredit and silence the movie. Conspiracy theorists have a new backer, a man who once played Jesus. Actor Jim Caviezel pushing theories that can only be described as flat out crazy. Lord, we got folks in the street, ain't got nothing to eat, and the whole beast milk and welfare. Well, God, if you're five foot three and you're 300 pounds, taxes ought not to pay for your bags of fudge rounds. There is an extremely disturbing trend in Western cultures that normalizes and even celebrates obesity, rather than telling people to take care of their bodies through exercise and eating well. There are celebrities such as Lizzo who have been praised for being proud of her size and weight. Young men are putting themselves six feet in the ground Cause all this country does is keep on kicking them down Oliver here is referencing the epidemic among young men who feel lost and left behind by a country and culture that hates and emasculates young men. This is precisely why young men have been flocking to men like Peterson and Andrew Tate, who provide an alternative to what the mainstream culture is telling them. The film director Olivia Wilde oh. has a new movie out, which yeah. she says is based on you, this insane man, this pseudo-intellectual hero to the incel community, incel being these weirdo loner men. Uh, who are uh, despicable in many ways. Is that you? Are you the intellectual hero to these people? Sure, why not? You know, um, people have been after me for a long time by, because I've been speaking to disaffected young men. You know, what a terrible thing to do that is. thought the marginalized were supposed to have a voice. It's making you emotional to talk about that. Well, God, you know. Imagine being a sixth grade boy in the United States right now. What are you hearing at school? What are they telling you on the internet? Well, they're telling you to stop being yourself. Sit still. Stop joking. Suppress your aggression. Share your feelings. Obey. Female qualities are virtuous. Masculine qualities are oppressive. That's the message. In case it wasn't clear enough, schools around the country have removed urinals from boys' bathrooms. The male body itself is shameful, 
sit down when you pee like a good little girl. Because I'm literally telling young men to go to the gym and to stand up for themselves and believe, believe in themselves and believe in something. Of course, the real solution is biblical masculinity. And my prayer is that young men would find their value and purpose in Jesus Christ, the gospel, and what God has revealed in the Bible, rather than through the generic brands of masculinity provided by people like Jordan Peterson and Andrew Tate. You know, when you take manhood and try to look at manhood in isolation, um, you've, you've already got a problem. Uh, the God who created us, he created us male and female. And so you cannot understand maleness apart from femaleness, right? You have to understand what it means to be a man, first of all, by what it means to be made in the image of God, and second of all, by what it means to be made as this, this counterpart to a woman. And this idea that God created us to be priest and prophet and provider and protector, um, God designed us that way. And when you take us away from that, like, you know, we're bigger than women, we're stronger than women, you know, we have, we, we have all of these things that allow us to take advantage of women. They get pregnant, you know, we don't, we can just walk away from it and, you know, leave them with that. Uh, there, there are so many things that if, if left unchecked, they do allow for this toxic version of masculinity. And so what we have to call men back to is this understanding of manhood that is outside of themselves. And you being a man is not just about who you think you are or even who you want to be. It is about you pointing back to the one who made you. It's about you pointing back to the purpose for which he made you. And it's about you pointing back to the relationship that he intends for you to have with the opposite sex. This fact that Oliver's song is going so viral is a powerful reminder that as Christians we need to be proclaiming the message of Jesus Christ and the gospel to the world. Because while there are certainly many things beyond our control that can make us feel helpless and hopeless, the gospel of Jesus Christ is an unchanging source of hope and joy that gives our lives purpose, even in the midst of opposition and persecution. The goal of life is not personal satisfaction, the goal of life is the glory of God. The goal of life is not personal satisfaction. The goal of life is the glory of God and the honor of God. And that is also the chief blessing of life. When you live to honor God, you enjoy life to its max. The good news is God can change you, will change you, will make you a new creation through faith in Jesus Christ. We live in a world where these lies are so pervasive, and I've just kind of introduced them to you. And I'm here to tell you from the pages of Scripture the truth. It's all summed up, really, in John 3:16. For God so loved the world, and that's very important to know, that the God who is absolutely holy, who is in charge of everything, sovereign over everything, the God who gave us His law, the God who demands righteousness, the God who knows we're sinful, the God who compels us to believe so that death is a glorious transition into heaven. The God who has designed for us to give him glory forever. That God loves us. He loves the world. He loves sinners like us. And he has sent his son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That's the good news. Thank you so much. Very interesting and exciting to know that, you know, like a farmer that's been singing for so long, just one song, one song of his, telling his whole part of, or the way he feels about the way that life has been going on, that the song will put him at the limelight. This is quite interesting. I love the fact that People are not beginning to appreciate people that are telling the truth, people that are based, people that are not just deciding to follow the crowd. It's one thing to know, to know the truth, and it's another thing to stand up, to stand up for the truth. You guys get that? People that know the truth, but they are, they are too ashamed to come out of, so that people, they won't get cancelled. I think that's the word. People are, people are too scared of being cancelled that they, they fail to stand up for the truth. So it's commendable when we see people that are not ashamed to stand up for the truth. This is this is actually nice, but let me know what you thought about this new song that is like Jason Aldean's song. Let me know what you thought in the comment section. Guys, don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and take care of yourself, guys. Bye.